Hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah. Wow, I'm feeling it already. The spirit in here is very high. You're all just so spiritually high. It must be uh, maybe the Thanksgiving and uh, all that thanks and stuff that is really bringing about the amazing spirit here. Um, thank you, Walter, for your wonderful prayer. It's always powerful with Walter. Yeah. And the praise team, um, you know, thank you so much. It's, I'm always so blessed to get to play with these young people. Um, it just is my big thrill for the whole week, to be honest with you. Uh, Oceans, we usually play that when I speak because I always get a little teary-eyed and emotional over that song. Not sure why, but I do. So it kind of gets me ready and ah, in the spirit for uh, trying to uh, express something that I feel is something, as I usually say, is something I really need. You know, God tells me, Greg, you need to, and oh, that sounds like a good idea for what to speak about this week. So it really works well. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, by the way. Did everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving? Yeah? Did everybody eat too much? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we had a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. In fact, our quadrinity, yeah, I'm not sure what the word really is for four couples. It's our little group. We're called the Pearl Gates. Um, Steve and Kumi hosted us uh, for a wonderful Thanksgiving, and uh, Dean and Keiko and their son came uh, along with, uh, you know, we were missing one of the couples. They went to New York, so Reverend Arias and his family came over with us. So we had a wonderful wonderful time. I felt, you know, my, uh, my son and my daughter showed up, and if you knew my daughter, you'd know how wonderful that is, because she wouldn't normally show to something like that, but she came, uh, and it was really, I felt so much like family. I felt so, um, you know, these are my brothers and sisters. This is my family, and we just talked about just amazing things, and uh, had a, a, just a, Steve, by the way, is an amazing host and an amazing cook, as well as Kumi. Um, I gained five pounds. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really, you know, it, it's a great time of year. I, I love the holidays, but I just, I have trouble because I gain weight so easily. So, but anyways, uh, it's not like um, back in 1620 when actually... The pilgrims uh, came to this continent. They came on the Mayflower to build a new world where they could be free to worship God. And it wasn't easy because, you know, back then they didn't have big power boats, you know, big steel ships that would cruise quickly. Uh, they had wooden boats with sails that were actually kind of crude. Uh, the Mayflower is about 100 feet long, and it had many different levels and rooms and things. But uh, they set out in September uh, coming to this new world, and they were shooting for actually Virginia Meadows or something like that, and they kind of got off course. And they ended up in the Cape Cod, um, and they explored there for a while, and then they figured they were in the wrong place. So they ended up going in um, to to Plymouth Rock. <laughs> and that's where they started. And, you know, it wasn't easy. Actually, they stayed on the boat for a couple of months because this was the dead of winter. It was December, and it was freezing cold. And so everybody really, most people stayed on the boat all winter long. Um, but anyways, the spring came, and uh, they started. They met uh, some Indians that really helped them to... Uh, get settled and things. However, um, 56 died due to starvation, disease, and the cold winter. However, they did not give up. In 1621, 46 pilgrims and 91 Indians met to give thanks for a bountiful harvest and for the preservation of their lives. They had every reason really to be depressed, to be discouraged, to complain, to maybe want to go back. But they chose instead to give thanks. Thanks for the great things that are happening to them. 
And so that's what I call gratitude, right? Which actually is a topic of uh, what I'm going to speak about today. It's entitled, if I can get this button to work, ah, how to develop an attitude of gratitude. I know many of you have heard this attitude of gratitude, you know, but um, it's not always easy. And so actually, uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, gratitude and how we can really develop this attitude of gratitude. So uh, have you heard of R Rudyard Kipling? He was actually a great British poet uh, whose writings have blessed many of us, including many that have come generations ago. Rudy Kipling was a very famous writer even before he died. In fact, he made a great deal of money with his trade of writing. In fact, a newspaper reporter once came up to him and says, do you know, Mr. Kipling, I just read that somebody calculated that you make about $100 a word in your writings. And Mr. Kipling raised his eyebrows and says, you know, I certainly wasn't aware of that. So the reporter, reporter kind of cynically went on and said, he reached into his pocket, he pulled out a $100 bill, and he gave it to uh, Mr. Kipling and said, here's a $100 bill, Mr. Kipling. Now give me one of your $100 words. Mr. Kipling looked at the $100 bill for a minute and took it and folded it up, put it in his pocket and said, thanks. <laughs> you know, the word thanks is certainly a $100 word, right? In fact, I'd say it's more like a million dollar word. However, it is one word that is actually too seldom heard, right? too rarely spoken, and too often forgotten. Meister Eckhart, I hope I pronounced that right, was a German theologian, a philosopher, a mystic. He was born around 1260, so this is a long time ago. Uh, he said, if the only prayer you say in your life is thank you, that would suffice. That's a pretty powerful statement because we want to worship God, but just saying thank you is a deep worship that we can do. In fact, in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the Apostle Paul said, In everything, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He said, in everything, not good things, not just happy major things, but in everything, Give thanks. Hak Jahan Moon, our true mother, on July 31st, 1984, uh, she had a leaders meeting. And the title of uh, her speak was To Live in Utmost Gratitude. Now, most of you know that in 1984, uh, her husband, uh, the Reverend Moon, was in prison. He was in prison in Danbury. And actually, I'm not sure how grateful she felt about that. However, uh, she gathered the leaders together and said, Father urges us to have this leaders meeting today to unite our goals and our plans for the days and months to come. And knowing that you would all be coming today, she said, I thought about this, about what can I tell you? What, what can I express to you? And uh, she said that I have but one goal, one life's goal, and it's to live in utmost gratitude. Today, I will be more grateful than yesterday. And tomorrow, I will be yet more grateful. So it seems, right, that gratitude is extremely important, right? However, it's just not always an easy thing to do. Would you agree? Yeah. Maybe you've heard about the Jewish grandmother that was at the beach, she's with her grandson, and you know she doesn't want to get her feet wet, so she's kind of at the edge while the little Todd is playing in the water, and he's kind of sitting there, and all of a sudden, a huge wave comes crashing down. And when the wave receded, she looked, and her grandson was gone. He was swept away by the wave. She raised her hands to the sky and screams and cries, Lord, how could you? Haven't I been a wonderful grandmother? 
Haven't I been a wonderful mother? Haven't I kept a kosher home? Haven't I lit candles every Friday night? Haven't I tried my very best to live a life that you would be proud of? Haven't I? A voice booms from the sky and says, okay, okay. A few minutes later, another huge wave appears, right, out of nowhere and crushes down on the beach. And as the water recedes again, the boy is standing there, smiling, splashing around as if nothing ever happened. The voice boomed again. I have returned your grandson. Are you satisfied now? She responds, what happened to the hat he was wearing? <laughs> I know, isn't that, but isn't that human nature? Whoops, wrong way. You know, this is kind of the way it is. You know, if you go, it's easy to complain. It's easy to find that one thing that you know, it, it's not just great enough to have your grandson back, but hey, where's his hat, you know? But we tend to do that. We, you know, the poor gratitude window is really uh, suffering there. And it's, it's uh, very critical, right, to be grateful and have gratitude. But why, why is it so difficult? I mean, really, why is it so difficult? And, and I'd like to look at this a little bit deeper and really talk about what is gratitude and why it's so important, and then how we can hone in our gratitude skills. So let's look at the meaning of gratitude. This is right out of the dictionary. Gratitude, it's a noun, in case you didn't know. The quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Synonyms are gratefulness, thankfulness, thanks, appreciation, indebtedness, recognition, acknowledgement, credit. You know, it's really, uh, it means a lot of things. And so gratitude means thankfulness. It means counting your blessings, noticing simple pleasures, and acknowledging everything that you receive everything that you receive. It means learning to live your life as if it was a miracle, if everything were a miracle, and being aware on a continuous basis of how much you have been given. Gratitude shifts your focus from what your life lacks to the abundance that is already present. Sounds good so far, right? Yeah. In addition, there's a lot of benefits here. In addition, behavioral and psychological research has shown the surprising life improvements that can stem from the practice of gratitude. By practicing gratitude, giving thanks makes people happier and more resilient. It strengthens relationships. It improves health. It reduces stress. All these things, a benefit how great this is. And you're probably saying, oh, right. But actually, research shows that gratitude heightens the quality of life. In fact, there's two psychologists, Michael McCullough of Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, and Robert Emmons of the University of California at Davis. They wrote an article about an experiment they conducted on gratitude and its impact on well-being. The study split several hundred people into three different groups. And these three different groups were told to keep a daily diary. One group really wasn't told what to say. They just keep a diary every day. Um, one group uh, was told to specifically write about either good things, bad things. The other one was told to write about their unpleasant experiences. And the last group was instructed to make a daily list of, for which they were grateful. The results of the study indicated that daily gratitude exercises resulted in a higher reported levels of alertness. You feeling a little bit tired? Yeah? I see a few nods. Okay. Determination, optimism, and energy. In addition, those in the gratitude group experienced less depression. Anybody depressed here? Um, and it also, it helped with people exercise more regularly, and they made greater progress to achieving their personal goals. 
Now, this was a case study. This isn't just something we think or this was an actual case study. They gave these people these things to do. And as they did them over a course of time, they noticed these changes in their life, changes in how they acted, changes in their cells. So Dr. Emmons, who's been studying gratitude for actually over 10 years and is considered to be the world's leading authority on gratitude. In fact, he wrote a book called Thanks and How the Science of Gratitude Can Make You Happier. Uh, the book is uh, based on research of thousands of people, actually around the world, by different groups. And they found these studies show that practicing gratitude can increase happiness levels by 25%. Happiness levels, 25%. This is significant, among other things, because just as there's a certain weight that feels natural to your body, which I sure changed on Thanksgiving, there's also your body has a level of happiness. You're, you have a predetermined, they call it a set point. Did you know that? Yeah, everybody here has their own set point. And during the day, if something bad happens to you, your happiness drops momentarily. And then it goes back up to that set point. And if something great happens to you, your happiness level goes up and then comes back down to that happiness set point. So the practice of gratitude raises that set point. It, in fact, it raises it up to 25%. Practicing gratitude would make you 25% more happy. I like that. I can use. Good. I think. In addition, his uh, research showed that those who practice gratitude tended to be more creative, bounce back more quickly from their adversity, have a stronger immune system. Anybody feeling a little cold and stuff? Gratitude. And have a stronger social relationships than those who do not practice gratitude. He further points out that to say we feel grateful is not to say that everything in our lives is necessarily great. It just means we are aware of our blessings. So, you know, you've heard the story in everyone's life, a little rain must fall, right? I mean, it happens. We all have our things that happen in our life. You know, I, I was talking to my son on the way in this morning about yesterday at work and the experience I had, and it wasn't happy, you know. And so, but he's saying you have to be aware of the good things in your life and aware of the things that you take for granted and think about them and feel how much they're really blessings. You have to notice and appreciate each day's gifts. People tend to take for granted the good that is already present in their lives. You know, you just take for granted things like waking up in the morning, you know, seeing, hearing. So there's a gratitude exercise that instructs that you should actually imagine losing some of these things that you take for granted, such as your home, your ability to see, your ability to hear or to walk, or anything that gives you comfort. Kind of just imagine not having these things. I don't have a home anymore. I can't see. I can't hear. Imagine that. Now, these are things we take for granted. I mean, because it's every day. But then after imagining that, then um, let feel how it feels getting each thing back one by one. And then consider how grateful you really are for each and every one of those. In addition, you need to start finding joy in the small things instead of holding out for the big achievements. Um, you know, sometimes we get all excited, you know, birthday parties or if we win a lotto or, you know, something great happens, your kids have a boy or girl or whatever or... You know, what, whatever it is, these big things, we get excited and happy and they're wonderful and, oh, our levels go up and it's just so wonderful. However, we need to think also um, how to feel gratitude and joy from the smaller things and appreciate one of those as a joy, as a happiness, as something that really stimulates us. Another way to use giving thanks to appreciate life more fully is the gratitude to help you put things in their proper perspective. When things don't go your way, remember 
that every difficulty carries within it seeds of an equal or greater benefit. In the face of adversity, ask yourself, what is good about this? What can I learn about this? And how can I benefit from this? That's not always an easy thing to do. Forgive me, honey. So back in, two then, two th two, back in 2010, before that, I was a manager at a car dealership and made a lot of money, and we had everything so wonderful. But we went through an economic time, long story, I won't go into it, but uh, we ended up not having all those wonderful things. And it was actually, um, it was a, a very difficult time for our family. And, you know, you think, well, what could actually be good about that? I can't, I mean, it's just, you know, things we're used to, things we have, you know, it, it changes everything. And I know many of you have also experienced that. But what I found was um, that I really learned to understand how much God really loves me. That God knows what's going on in my life, in our family's life. He knows what we need. He knows what he needs to do to help us make it through. And so when difficult things would happen, these miracles would happen in our life. Miracles would happen that we just didn't want to explain miracles that we could see how God was very visible in our life, that things that we take for granted when things are going all too well. So in all things that we do, you need to find that, that um, what is God trying to show me? What is what can I learn from this? How can I benefit from this not-so-good situation? There are many ways to practice gratitude. A common method is to develop a practice of gratitude is to keep a common journal, a concept that was made famous by Sarah Ban Brednock's book, Simple Abundance, Journal of Gratitude. Good name, right? This exercise basically consists of writing down every day a list of three to ten things for which you're grateful for. You can do this first thing in the morning or before you go to bed. Another exercise is to write a gratitude letter to a person who has made a positive influence in your life, um, who you've really not properly thanked. In fact, some experts say that you should actually arrange a meeting with that person and read them that letter face to face. You really give the gratitude that um, how this person may have changed our life or brought us to a different level. So um, this is all good stuff, and uh, I thought it might be good to, to make this work, oh. to really go a little deeper in how to um, develop an attitude of gratitude. So first is to notice your everyday world from a point of gratitude and be amazed at all the goodness that we take for granted. So I've been, because I've been working on this, I've been really starting to do that. So in the morning, you know, when I wake up, I go, ah, oh, God, thank you. I'm alive today. Oh, God, thank you for my beautiful wife laying next to me. Oh, God, thank you. I open my eyes and I can see and I can here. Oh, God, thank you for the bathroom. God, thank you for this warm water going to, trickling over my body. I just feel so good. Thank you, God, for this hot water in the morning. Just It makes me feel so good. Thank you, God. You know, uh, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And you kind of over-elaborate on it. You know, At first, it's kind of strange, but little tiny things that we take for granted, we need to really understand what incredible blessings we are. I mean, did you ever think about seeing? I mean, think about it. How amazing is that? How amazing that I can look out and see all of you. And not only I see you, I can feel you. I mean, how incredible is that? What God has blessed us with such an amazing life, an amazing feeling, and an amazing ability to comprehend and feel and see. You know, it's... Um, Reaching down to say, thank you, God, for these things. Thank you. It really makes you appreciate them more. And it makes you feel, wow, I really have a lot. You know, I, I, I have a lot. I mean, the list goes on and on of all these wonderful things that we have or I have. 
Uh, back to the gratitude journal. I haven't done that yet, but I, I think I'm going to uh, because they say it's very important. If you actually write down, uh, noting it says one or more, or the other uh, person said three to ten. Uh, maybe if you wrote ten things your first day, you might run out after a few days, so maybe one or two is better. But every day to think about something that you can be grateful for and write it down. Write it in a book. Write it down. You know, it, it really instills in your mind, you know, you see, you think, you write, you say, it really impresses in your mind. You don't need a fancy notebook, you don't need a computer program, you know, just a, a stack of paper stapled together would work, you can just make this little journal. Um, if you identify something or someone with a negative trait, switch it in your mind to a positive trait. For instance, you know, our sanctuary is a little bit small, right? I mean, yeah, it's a little bit small for a sanctuary. You could say that. Or you could say, wow, this sanctuary is so cozy. It's so warm. <laughs> it's really intimate, right? We feel close together, right? Turning things around, you know, when you look at something and you, and you see, uh, you know, a reason to think not so good, turn that into a, a positive. And everything you do, if you catch yourself, wow, that guy sure is acting strange, but you might say, that guy's really exciting. Look at that. He's really just making me smile today, you know. Just change the things you look at, the change the things you see. And you have to kind of be consciously aware because it doesn't really just happen. You have to think about it. When these words are coming out of your mouth, you stop and think, no, no, and make it into a positive. Change the negative into a positive. Ah, gratitude requires humility, which the dictionary defines as modest and respectful, uh, and exploring where that fits in your life. Sometimes uh, humility and sincerity uh, really go hand in hand with gratitude. Uh, sometimes we can say, uh, you know, being in the car business and a salesperson, sometimes you just say things. Oh, what a beautiful dress you're wearing. Or, oh, that hair looks so nice. You know, you're complimenting, but you may not even feel it. But it's really not right. You need to be sincere. When you look at, find, find that thing that's really, Reverend Do, you're such a handsome guy, you know? You really are. I and mean, you do so much. Thank you for helping us and really loving us all so much. Find those positive, real things. Be sincere, humble in what you think and how you express gratitude. Ah, give at least one compliment daily, whether directly to a person or by sharing your appreciation of something. Um, I love how quiet it is in the morning, don't you? Or, gosh, honey, you're so beautiful. <laughs> and honey, you know, I am so blessed. And I'm such a um, jealous of me at work because she brings my breakfast every day. Yes, yeah, she makes me an omelet and brings it to my workplace so it's warm. Yeah. And <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. I don't always say thankful or thank you, but it's really important. It, it's really important to show your your heart to somebody. You know, you know, it, it might feel a little uncomfortable when we say it, but we just show that gratitude for those things and uh, making people feel good. So we already talked about this. When you find yourself in a situation, what can I learn? And again, you really have to think about that because sometimes, again, uh, like when they came over on the Mayflower, uh, you know, more than half died. They died of diseases, of starvation, of freezing to death. It was cold out there. I, you know, they lived on the boat for the two or three months. I mean, it wasn't an easy thing. I mean, there's a lot to be grumbling and complaining about, I would think. But they chose to give thanks, and they found what is good, that they did have this 
a chance to have a freedom of religion. The new friends they made, the Indians that really worked with them, helped them, uh, and had not been for them, they may not have made it at all. So uh, find the good things. I, I, think, I believe God sometimes gives us these experiences to grow our heart. You know, he, you, we get things and we take them as, ah, oh, why me, God? But sometimes God is trying to grow your heart, expanding your ability to love, expanding your ability to really have a relationship with God through those things. So uh, the next one is a good one. Vow not to complain, criticize, or gossip for a week. <laughs> right? You know, well, you know, the thing about that is, you, you make this little thing, I am not going to complain, criticize, or gossip for a whole week. So you have to be thinking about that, and when those words start coming out of your mouth, oh, look at that so-and-so, they don't do anything right, or whatever it is that you're complaining about, notice it, think about it, and stop it, and then notice how much energy you're spending on negative thoughts. We just spend so much negative energy on the most stupidest things, right? And we don't realize it because it just so happens. But make this vow for a week, and every time you start to do complain, criticize, or gossip, stop yourself and realize that negative energy that you're using, right, to... Um, um, really bring you down. Negative energy doesn't help anyone, especially yourself. This is a good one here. Sound genuinely happy to hear from the people who call you on the phone. Whether they respond with surprise or delight, they'll feel valued. Now, again, back to sales. You know, um, back in the olden day, they, they wanted us to put a mirror up in front of us as we receive calls or make calls. You know, when you're happy and smiling and genuinely sincere in that, you may think it's just a voice on the other end of the line, but think about it. You really feel if somebody's happy. You really feel if somebody's genuinely excited to hear from you. You know, you, you've, even though it's a phone, and they might be 100 miles away or 1,000 miles away or the other side of the world, they can feel that in their heart. They can feel that in their mind. They can feel that in their spirit. So you really need to think about and sound genuinely happy on the phone. Ah, Reverend Dew, this one's for you. Um, to show gratitude and appreciation. It's good to donate money, time, or talent by getting involved. And you'll better appreciate yourself from doing these things. Um, and it will appreciate you more as well. So it's a really good way because, you know, this is our life, wouldn't you agree? Um, true parents, uh, our family, one family under God. This is, this is our whole life. Um, so sometimes getting involved and doing things is really important. And as we do that, we can really appreciate because we all know how easy it is to uh, find the difficult part of things in our movement because it's not an easy thing, but to appreciate all the blessings we have with brothers and sisters, each and every one of you have stories to tell, I know. Each and every one of you go through sacrifices. Each and every one of you uh, had difficulties, and each and every one of you um, have given your life for God and for true parents. And uh, we need to appreciate that, really need to um, unite with that and really need to reflect with that to go forward as a movement, as a family of God, so, um, no uh, talk or sermon would be complete without words from uh, our two parents, our two father, Reverend Moon. And so, February 16th, 1970, he said, 
What is the essence of a life of faith? It is a heart of gratitude to God. That heart is a basis by which we can transcend the relationship ordinary fallen people have with God and enter a higher relationship with God, that of oneness. Should we thank God only when we are prospering? No. Did God care for us only when things were going well for him? No. The more difficult the situation, the more firm was God's determination, regardless of the suffering, to labor and struggle on our behalf. Therefore, today, to properly serve God as our Father, we should demonstrate our gratitude to him when we are going through difficult times rather than the easy times. When you understand this principle, you will be able to give gratitude to God even when your path requires you to bear a very heavy cross. So, um, in conclusion, um, once you become orientated towards looking for things to be grateful for, you will find that you begin to appreciate simple pleasures and things that you previously took for granted. Gratitude should not be just a reaction to getting what you want, but an all-time gratitude, the kind where you notice the little things and where you constantly look for the good, even in unpleasant situations. Today, start bringing gratitude to your experiences instead of waiting for a positive experience in order to feel grateful. In this way, you'll be on your way towards becoming a master of gratitude. So, to all of you, this is our diploma. You fill in your name there. I, I know that you're going to go out this week and vow and uh, think of things to say and uh, uh, how we can be grateful for our amazing blessings. Uh, thank you very much. Let's pray.